Hey guys, this is Gaming Cow, welcome to another Toho Puppet Dance performance net playing battle. This time, once again, this is SOS, but I'm playing this time because, you know, I kind of had enough of doing editing stuff yesterday and really wanted to play a game. So, when I say yesterday, I mean, of course, Monday, which is, uh, yeah, I kind of have to upload stuff overnight right now, so there is that. Anyway, uh, you may notice a slight upgrade to the design on the right hand side. The actual layout is still the same, but I did manage to get hold of the character portraits from Shane and basically spent all of Monday editing those things, cropping them into, you know, an actual uh, square thing so I could fit them into the into the sidebar stuff and added style number uh, letters to them thanks to Slow's design on that. So it looks a lot better now, I will admit. There's something I wanted to do from the start, but it was just going to be so much work that I honestly wanted to see if the box sprite stuff would be fine first. But I personally don't like them as much either. I did want to transition to this regardless, it just happened a bit earlier than I expected. But hopefully you'll be able to see uh, much better now how things go. and. Yeah, let's just take a look at the match we have here. So, team-wise, uh, SOS is running the sand team. Defense mailing actually does set up sand when she comes in, and of course the uh, whatever the stone is called, it's the basically like the soft rock of this game. It uh, it increases the duration of the sand to eight turns. Um, other major player that way is Kongara because she actually has sand rush. So she's really quite quick anyway, but she gets doubled speed during the sand, which is ridiculous. And, uh, well, I say ridiculous, but you know, it's... You know how it goes with these things. She's not quite as powerful as Excadrill, I don't think, but I think she has a bit better coverage. Or at least she... I mean, she's got Steel and Fire, which is pretty good. And uh, the other... The other key player of that team is Speedy Yomu, who is a Guts attacker. Very, very good stuff there. My team is built around Bind Trap. I did want to test out Tay as well, because Tay is one of the only non-dark types to get Bind Trap, and is also the only puppet to get both Bind and Stealth Trap at the same time. So we've already seen Tay do a little bit in the previous match I had with, uh, with Source, but uh, yeah, the idea is to set up the trap, she's got taunt in case setup stuff goes against her, and uh, I actually don't have changeling on mine, even though I probably should for this team, but I don't really want to run much of a vault, uh, vault turn sort of core here, because I don't have anybody else that can really use it. Other cool stuff in this team that we may or may not see, um, Amazo is really good, um, Amazo has basically got Hobgoblin in this form, so she has Illusion from Zorak, and she pairs up really nicely with Toyohime there. Uh, Toyohime's water and wind typing is only weak to electric and poison, and it's four times weak to electric, so you definitely want to hit her with that. But of course, Marizo is an earth type, so if she poses as Toyohime, then you can kind of uh, negate an attack that would otherwise be very effective. Uh, also, only base 100 speed on her, so Bind Trap works very nicely with her as well. Uh, the same with Rumia, at base 105 speed, Rumia has Brutality, which is a special type form of Hustle. 50% more power, but 20% less accuracy, and she has one of the highest uh, spread attacks in the game, so that's pretty powerful right there. So, yeah, let's go ahead and yeah, view the replay here, I believe it is this game that we should be watching. So yeah, I don't know well. And uh, yeah, I lose the lead matchup so hardcore here that this probably should have been it. Turn zero, I basically felt like I lost the game. Yugi is ultra slow. Iku is really, really strong. I might want to try and do a video on Iku at some point. But yeah, with the Jade as well, the Jade just gives a such a massive boost here. That crit really kind of hurt too. And I that was my only switch in, <laughs> and it's basically dead now. However. I am faster because Iku is only like base 85 speed, and I do get the chance to use Arclight. And Mailing coming in to set the sand up is fine, I'm part steel, so there's no problem with that. I don't quite get the kill, but that's okay. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to set up Yorohime here, so I'll explain what she's meant to do. Yorohime is a crit master. She has Sniper, so she boosts her critical hit power. She has. Uh, 
uh, what is it? Magic Ring to in is Scope Lens to increase her crit rate. Her moves don't. This time her moves don't have a high crit rate, but she has focus energy. So when she gets that magic three stages of crit, she basically just wins. I also kind of lose the prediction war here. I was thinking it was either going to be Iku or uh, Yomu that was going to come in here. Both of them null either Earth or fighting attacks respectively. And I mispredicted. Unfortunately, Yugi doesn't get to do anything here. I probably should have gone for the Rising sun actually, which is flame charge, and I probably would have been able to do something with Yugi there. If I got, if I went for that, I'd have outsped Iku on the next turn and I could have gone for the, the thing there, but it wouldn't have done anything against Konkara, so that was kind of the problem, you know, this mind games and I lost it, I lost it. Had to sack uh, Yugi unfortunately, but it does give me a chance to put Tei in, and Tei gets the, the bind trap up very nicely. Uh, Yomu has guts, so she has really high power for this, but she's not faster than me. And I do get my stealth trap up. I should have taunted this turn. I didn't know that Yomu had sword stance, which is what strenuous stance is. So now I'm kind of in a position that is well crap. Um, I didn't want him to set up again, so I do go for the taunt this turn just to be completely sure because I thought, well, maybe I might somehow survive a hit otherwise. You know, uh, not with Tay, but with somebody else on my team. And, well, yeah, that kind of happened. Uh, thankfully, the weather has now disappeared, so Kangara's not going to be faster than my stuff anymore. And, well, Toyohime is normally relatively good at defense, although she's more for the power aspect. I do have Protect because I have leftovers and she doesn't really have much of a better move to go for. And I, I looked at it, and, well, if I got a double Protect, I would actually go ahead and not die to Yomi here, but I don't. So Brandish comes in, one shots Toyo with basically plus four attack and uh, kind of uh, rips Yomi out as well. But! The important thing now, both Bind and Stealth Trap are on the field, and Sand is not possible to bring back up. I had to think of my words there for a sec. So, Gengetsu notices my Focus Ash, but that doesn't really matter too much. So, so long as I don't miss, I pretty much have this game won. And yeah, Rumil uh, Rumilia. Rumia has 145 base spread attack. Her disadvantage is that her moves are only 80 base power, but they're all 80 100, you know, 100% 100 accuracy. So, I basically have 120 power and 80 accuracy on every attack I have, which is actually quite scary. Uh, as you see, I of Laplace just takes out uh, Kongara very easily, Sweepers will not really stand up to even un unboosted Rumia, and while well, Powerletti can live and does get the Cold Rain off, this has a 10% chance of stopping me, or putting me to sleep basically didn't happen, so Rumia continues on her rampage here, and well, there's not really a whole lot that can be done here. This switch is a little bit silly, but at the same time, there wasn't really anything else that you could do. I either just swept through uh, swept through the other two, you know, with Eye of Laplus anyway, or I missed because of Brutality, and that's it, so... Yeah, Rumia is super scary if she gets to outspeed stuff. Uh, that's the catch, is that she does need to have speed stuff, and Bind Trap is kind of very important for that. Which is why I tried Tay on this team instead of, like, Hina or somebody such as that. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. Uh, Rumia getting to sweep stuff is really cool. Uh, didn't get to see Mamizo at all. Mamizo is basically an expert belt attacker who has a really good amount of coverage. So she has Steel, Earth, Illusion, and Nature, I believe, is the other type I have. She doesn't get Changeling in a power form, which is dumb. I would have really loved to see that. But uh, yeah, if I didn't sweep with Rumia, then Mamizo would have definitely come in and been able to take on everything as well. So once Rumia at least weakened everything, then I could have just wrecked face. Because I had the Steel attack to go against Iku, I had... Uh, ground to go against Kongara, I had the, uh, what else was there, uh, Letty I had Nature to go against, although she might not have died from that, I don't know, uh, I'd have to run that out, but yeah, powerful stuff there, and yeah, that's really all that can be said, I had Illusion against uh, Gengetsu, so yeah, 
Either one of them could have done the work, I just chose to use Rumia because Rumia is really fun. So, this has been Game Account showing off another battle replay in Toho Puppet Dance Performance. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the alterations to the layout. Again, let me know if there's anything else that I should do to improve it, because I am always looking to improve the quality of these things, and that's definitely one way of doing it, is to give feedback. I'm really grateful to actually have it this time, because usually when I ask that sort of thing, nobody says anything. So thank you guys a lot for, you know, being super awesome and telling me that I should try different stuff. So until next time, take care.